Hi, so we have one video in which we are going to find the square root of decimal numbers. To find the square root of decimal numbers, we are going to use division method. It's very easy to find the square roots of decimal number using division method. But there is a slight change in the division method when we are finding the square root of decimal numbers. And what is that change? Yes, we will learn about that as we start solving this problem. So to find the square root of 761.76, first we'll draw these lines and then we do the pairing. And while we do the pairing, we start from this decimal point. We'll start from decimal point and go in both the direction. So when we go in the left direction, six and one will make one pair and 7 will be alone in the pair and if we go towards the right this 7 and 6 will make one pair and suppose if you have a case where you have to find the square root of 7.263 here also you'll start from this decimal point you'll go towards left so 7 will make one group and if you go towards right this 2 6 will make one group and this 3 will be alone or you can add a 0 to make a group of 2, right? Because adding the 0 doesn't actually change the value of the number. But it will help you in finding the square root, right? So adding the 0 is allowed towards the right hand side of the digits after the decimal point, right? But you cannot add zeros over here. You can't make it 70, right? Let's focus on how to find the square root of this number. So this is the only difference, right? We have to start making the pairs starting from the decimal point. For the whole number portion, we have to go towards left and to the make pairs in the decimal part, we have to go towards the right, okay? So again, we will follow the same procedure. We have to find the biggest number whose square is smaller than seven. So two is the biggest number. I'll write two here and I'll write two at the place of divisor also. Two to the four. If I subtract, I'll get 3 as remainder and then I have to note down this 6, 1 to make the next dividend and I have to add this new digit in the quotient which is 2 to this divisor, right? And 2 plus 2 is 4 and then I have to leave this place for the next digit in the divisor, right? So what will be that next digit? Yes, that can be three, four, five, anything. So let's assume if it is five. So if it is five, I'll get 45 as the divisor. When 45 gets multiplied by five, five fives are 25, four fives are 20 plus two, 22. This is, I think, very small compared to 361. So let's assume this digit to be six. Then this divisor will become 46. And 46, when gets multiplied by 6, we will get 6, 6 are 36, 3 carried forward, 6, 4 are 24, plus 3 is 27. This is also very small. So let's assume next digit as 7. Or let's skip 7, let's assume it as 8. So 48 multiplied by 8 is 8, 8 are 64, 6 carried forward, 8, 4 are 32, plus 6 38 right so we get 384 which is bigger than 361 so I think 7 will be the perfect choice so if I put 7 over here it becomes 47 7 7 are 49 9 will come over here 4 will be carried forward 7 4 are 28 28 plus 4 is 32 we get 329 and when we subtract 11 minus 9 is 2, 5 minus 2 is 3, we get 32, right? And now I have to note down this 76. 76 I'll note down and the 76 is coming after the decimal point. So I have to add a decimal point over here, right? And here in the case of divisor, I have to add 7. 7 plus 7 is 14, 1 carried forward, 1 plus 4 is 5 and I'm leaving this place for the next digit in the divisor. So here we have got 6. So I think it should be 6. So if I 
put 6 in the units place, the number will become 546. And when 546 gets multiplied by 6, 6, 6 are 36, 3 carried forward, 6 fours are 24, plus 3 is 27, 2 carried forward, 6 fives are 30, plus 2 is 32. So 6 is the number, right? Because this is exactly same what we have over here. So if we put 6 at units place, we will get 3, 2, 7, 6. 546 multiplied by 6 is 3276. And if I subtract it, I'll get 0 as remainder. That means the square root of 761.76 is 27.6. Right? So this is the result.